Good evening, friends. It is Friday, June 5th, and it is a warm it's day in Denver. Good evening, friends. This is Friday, June 5th. It's been a 95 degree day in Denver, and we're beginning to breathe a sigh of relief in some ways, hoping that we can sleep okay tonight. I hope that you are finding yourself in a place that is safe, that is welcoming, where you are surrounded, if you're surrounded by people, that they are uh, people that welcome you and love on you. <laughs> And if you are holding friends or family who may be ill or struggling or broken, that you are not alone in lifting up prayers for help and hope and healing. It is Friday of the first week of June, and the last week has continued across our country to be a week of demonstration, protest, lifting up voices of people extending their very bodies in ways to express generations of inequity and uh, systems that do not help the whole of the community to be whole and healthy and to move forward into the future. Denver has been a city that has had protests in the day and some in the evening. There are mixtures of stories here and around the country of people coming together, even some of the officers or leaders coming out and extending support either in person or verbally. Our Denver police chief a couple nights ago had an open virtual community meeting where he took questions and responded and you know, was trying to sound like there will be attempts to address some of the real pain and anguish and the, uh, I, th I think of the image of the log jam that has been building up and building up and building up. And while some of us, due to our skin color, are able to uh, swim through or swim under easily, the log is in the stream geared for particular people to keep them from un being unable to swim as easily in the river of life. So wherever you are tonight, again, I pray that you are safe. But that you're not comfortable. I happened upon on Facebook was it last night or the night before, a, a Facebook event that anybody could, geared for clergy, and it come to find out it was kind of originated out of the Atlanta area, but there were clergy there from all over the country that signed on and talking about logistics and uh, how if you are going to go be in a protest, here are some things to consider. If you are going to be a spiritual chaplain, if you are going to move through this season, here are some things to consider. And uh, I think that was the first time I had heard the, you, you know, don't forget your baking soda and your water so that when the tear gas hits you, you will have some, or someone else near you, you will have something to help with the pain. That's the kind of season we're in, friends, where there are persons 
whose very being is being extended to bring a message that is not heard, that has not been heard, that has not been addressed. And so, as we lean into a weekend, wherever you find yourself, I hope that you are able to tend to and for yourself and those you love. That in the midst of the needed issues and uh, systems and justice and uh, prayers that are being lifted up, that you find moments to breathe. And if you need to step away, to step away. I've had some people periodically this week on Facebook taking, they'll just say, okay, I've got to take a break. See y'all later. And they'll take a day or two and just uh, exit. So I hope that you can uh, tend to yourselves as well as to your community, your family, your loved ones. And for those that have your feet on the ground and are walking and marching and protesting and lifting up the banner of no more the banner that black lives matter and that we need to start living and acting as if we believed it grace and peace and blessings and strength to you there was a prayer vigil in Denver today and I I uh, balance was thinking about whether to go down and what I realized in some of my hesitancy is that in my congregation, in, in my life right now, when I go to the church, I'm not there every day or for long periods, but when I'm there, the people that are starting to come to the church now, uh, including the staff that are there and that have been working through this whole COVID season, are 65 and over. Uh, my associate is not yet 65, she's about 60, or and uh, immuno. Uh, some are immunocompromised. And so, as again, as we think about what to do, how to do, how to communicate, how to present ourselves physically and verbally and emotionally through this season, um, do what you need to do. And so I prayed, I sent a blessing to my colleagues that I knew would be downtown today but I was concerned about the social distancing. That's something I'm taking seriously because of my community and my staff and my uh, beloved congregation members that are working in and around the church periodically in this season. <sighs> the two viruses, right? The two viruses of COVID and of racism. And here we are smack in the middle of, of both of them being lived out. The virus of COVID, which affects our bodies, which affects our hospitals and our ICUs and our medical systems and affects our beloved elders in their care facilities at higher rates, that affects our African-American bodies of our people at much higher rates. And so, in the midst of this COVID season, we have been given an opportunity to peel back the veil of our unwillingness to be educated and aware and to live out fully what it means to be followers of, uh, I recorded my welcome for worship this Sunday. <laughs> And I said, you know, we, we are followers of a brown-skinned Middle Eastern man who was killed because he preached and taught and lived out in, against the oppression and the systems of the state and of the empire. And so here now, this and this day, 
in this space, wherever you are, in whatever state or community, whatever neighborhood, whatever congregation, whatever your um, bubble of aware of life is, this is a moment for us to consider how to uh, step outside that veil and to say our confessions, to say, oh Lord, we can say that we did not know but there is no true reason that we did not know. Our school systems have not equipped us with the stories. Our, um, the history books that we were taught were not, uh, were not fully give it, ha, giving us the picture of reality and of the inheritance that we have lived into. And that's okay to say that but there's nothing today stopping us from getting on our computer and from opening, uh, looking up books and looking on the TV. I have been trying to, um, I've got a number of books now that are kind of in my queue, my list, but also looking for recommended films um, if you are not familiar with the, the there's a book as well but the, the film that came out this last year, Just Mercy, is being streamed free through June. So if, get on your streaming, get on, uh, look for it, and watch it. And watch it. Uh, it tells the true story of just one example of one lawyer and one and the cases that he has, the Equal Justice Initiative, Brian Stevenson, I think. Uh, Stevens, uh, sorry, all of a sudden my brain just went blank. And then he appeared, the real person, um, not the actor that portrayed him, but the real person appeared that yesterday I watched. It was recommended that a documentary called 13th. So it's the number, it's one, three, capital T, capital H. And it's a documentary, Ava DuVernay, uh, produced, uh, directed, directed, I think, around the, and the concept is the 13th Amendment, which is the clause that talks about the, that slavery is no longer legal, but then there's a clause in it, except in cases of criminal punishment. And that that clause has been lived out since since that 13th Amendment was ratified to provide a whole angle of what has become the prison industrial complex in American society and it's a it's a terribly important documentary that you your older youth and uh, adults in your family need to see I found it, it's a Netflix, I found it on YouTube and watched it yesterday, and it just uh, was so well done in how it encapsulated uh, different aspects of that, from the showing of the old film, Brave New World, to, I think the film was produced in 2016, so it ends with some shots of um, our president when he was campaigning and some of the things he was saying at that time. So 13th and Just Mercy. And I'm looking for recommendations of, of films and uh, other things too. So I'm also uh, trying to do some homework and diligence. There have been very gracious neighbors and friends and colleagues who are starting on Facebook to put out, here are some lists, here are some books to get you started, here are some things that you might um, that you might start with to advance your education about our nation, about our history, about the systems that that we all take advantage of and take for granted and may not have any clue what their background is. Um, so I encourage you in that. And I, if you go, if you come to this Facebook page, to my personal Facebook page, one of the things I'm trying to do is to share things as I find them. So, uh, so I did share both of these movies on my Facebook page if you need to take a look at what they are. 
Also a reminder, the um, Straight White American Jesus podcast is, is getting deep into this and has been. I mean, if you, if you listen and are intrigued, go back to previous episodes and, and listen. If they get at the heart of a lot of this uh, Christian nationalism and the, heart and the history that has brought us to this place as well. And also the New York Times has a podcast called The Daily that has had some very good, uh, concise, excellent, just really good, uh, and I think I mentioned that the other night too. So you can, I'm, I'm trying to use my personal Facebook page for a platform of sharing things as I come across, even as I try to find, look around at colleagues and friends uh, as I'm you know, trying to connect and see what other people are finding or things that they're finding helpful or how are you engaging? Um, are you leading? Uh, I'm looking at starting a, a book study here in a, a few weeks. I'm fi- finishing one Bible study and when I'm done with that in the, in the next couple of weeks or so, I'd like to start a book study. So I'm going to be getting uh, news out about that on the, the book, uh, Waking Up White. So you can take a look at that. So, to conclude, boy, it just seems like I'm rambling, <laughs> like I often do. Uh, so much heartfelt confession, repentance, and, um, and to say, okay, God, again, this is the season of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit moving us and disturbing us and calling us. So, we're... Where are you calling me to? Part of my daily prayer is, okay, what can I be awake to today? What do you want me to notice? I can't fix everything in one in one fell swoop, but what can I do today to help uh, strengthen myself and my sense of education and learning and um, advocacy and communication and caring for friends and colleagues and family? And what uh, what can I do uh, this moment for this day. The Psalms are a powerful reference that I've mentioned before that if you're looking for a prayer or a place to go to pray or to just sometimes I don't have the words to pray and so I turn to the Psalms sometimes as one resource and the the book of the Psalms in our Protestant Bibles there's typically 150 Psalms and I just turned to Psalm number one, Psalm one tonight. And hear these words. Happy are those who do not follow the advice of the wicked or take the path that sinners he- uh, tread or sit in the seat of scoffers. But their delight is in the law of the Lord. And on his law they meditate day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, which yield their fruit in its season, and their leaves do not wither. In all that they do, they prosper. The wicked are not so, but are like chaff that the wind drives away. Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. Now I know in my life there are instances, conversations, examples of things that I've done or said or not done or not said that could be considered Uh, harmful whether intentional or not harmful hurtful Uh, wicked is the word that's used in the in the translation here but but I like these images of the trees be this the trees being planted by streams of water you know if you're going to move and live through the season that we're in whether it's the COVID season 
um, the Black Lives Matter, the, ra the season of racism and coming to grips and looking in the mirror of who we are as people in this American country and who we have been and who we are called to be, we need to ground our roots into the water of living, of the living water. And so again, I hope you're tending to yourself, to your body, to your mind, to your spirit, to your relationships, so that you can continue to deepen and ground yourself in that spring of living water. And the ways of the wicked. I, li I like the way that it, uh, it's not just the individual people, but the ways of the wicked. Uh, the chaff, think of that chaff that the wind drives away. The extra stuff that does not sink down into the, the ground, does not sink down deeply to bring life and growth, but is blown away. And there are certainly many things that we hope and pray through our leaders, through um, laws that are on the books now, that people are, as we speak, legislating and trying to work with city councils and state legislatures and national legislatures. Even the NFL tonight, Roger Goodell came out and said, we were wrong to oppose the peaceful protest of our players. Now we'll see if that lasts. But we're starting to hear some things that I hope if they sink down, they could bring life. So I invite you to turn to Psalm 1 that Im and that image where on any given day I can find myself in both um, the righteous and the wicked. I mean, or may use other, other terms for that. The healthy and the unhealthy. Those that are looking out for themselves and those who are seeing uh, our place in the broader community. Where are you in the midst of that? Where are the roots have you been tending and watering your roots? This is a season of looking for a plant food <laughs> so that we can continue to grow. And so may we continue to open ourselves up to that. And I don't know, I don't remember if I've sung this. I need to go through all these meditations and make a list of the songs that I've sung. <laughs> But as in thinking about the task before us uh, and the invitation to be a part of God's good work in our neighborhoods and in our world, I'm just going to close with a spiritual, with an African-American spiritual. I'm going to live so God can use me any day, Lord, any time. I'm gonna live so God can use me any day, Lord, any time. I'm gonna live so God can use me any day, Lord, any time. I'm gonna work so God can use me any day, Lord, any time. I'm going to work so God can use me any day, Lord, any time. I'm going to pray so God can use me. Any day, Lord, any time, I'm going to pray so God can use me. Any day, Lord, any time, I'm going to sing so God can use me. Any day, Lord, any time, I'm going to sing so God can use me. Any day, Lord, any time, I'm going to work so God 
can use me any day, Lord, any time. I'm going to live so God can use me any day, Lord, any time. You know, a lot of people love those old spirituals and the messages of hope and strength and call and promise that they give us, but lest they be a bit of fluff in our spiritual rhythms. We need to pray and act out what they say. I'm going to live, I'm going to work, I'm going to pray, I'm going to sing, so God can use you, me. And so may we go to rest this night with that intention, with the intention to be a tree planted by streams of living water that we may deepen ourselves uh, with new life, with education, with learning, with speaking, with connection in this season. And that we may work, that we may live, that we may pray and sing so God can use us. Blessings to you this night. Brothers and sisters, may you breathe deep It's the Holy Spirit enlivening every cell in your body. Use it. Live it. Work it. Pray it. Sing it. So God may use you for good. Rest well. Amen.